everybody, happy 2022. It is so hard to believe that January is over. Oh my gosh, where has the first month of this year gone? I hope that you have had a great start to the year. I have had a very busy start to the year and I'm gonna tell you all about it here in a minute because I just wanna update you in this video with all the different things that are going on in my life. But before I do, I've gotta give a shout out to the sponsor of this video. You know them, you love them, Ana Luisa Jewelry. I'm wearing some of their pieces right now. I wear their pieces all the time, I am not kidding. And right now they are running a special sale, a Valentine's Day sale, a buy one, get one 40% off, which is a great deal. And if you don't know all about Ana Luisa, let me tell you, they are a sustainable jewelry brand and they put so much care into their pieces. I love the sort of celestial, dainty, magical quality that their pieces have. And you know that when you are getting an Ana Luisa piece, you are supporting a company that is committed to giving back to the environment and you are getting a piece of jewelry that's going to last you a very long time. Ana Luisa's pieces are made to last and they are carbon neutral. They offset all of their carbon emissions when they are making their pieces. I know that this makes me feel better about getting something that I know is going to be giving back to the world. We definitely need to be focusing on that now and always, and I also know that it's gonna be something I love. I have been wearing my Ana Luisa earrings all the time, every day, I am not joking. I really love them. They're so nice and dainty that they don't weigh down my ears, but they also are really interesting. I just got a compliment on these the other day. I love my ones that have little stars and moons on them. They've got so much to choose from and you will find something for everybody on your list, even if the only person on your list is you. That's right. Treat yourself 2022. Hey, Sean, what are you getting me for Valentine's Day? A pony. Really? Yeah. You where, asked. Where are we going to put it? Well, that's not my problem. That's fair. If a pony's not for you, maybe check out Ana Luisa and see what beautiful jewelry they have to offer for you or a loved one. Be sure and take advantage of their buy one, get one 40% off Valentine's Day sale. It ends Monday, February 7th. You don't want to miss it. I didn't know what to do for this video and there's a lot going on in my life so I thought maybe I'll just tell you all what's going on in my life, update you on everything. I have not been able to be as uh, active on here, on social media recently for a lot of reasons. I don't know if you'd notice, <laughs> and if you, if you don't, it's fine. But I just thought maybe this is a good time to tell you why and what's going on. As you all hopefully know, my group Shipwrecked Comedy is gearing up to shoot Headless, A Sleepy Hollow Story. You might remember us kickstarting that last summer. We raised $200,000, which is just wild, and we had to put off shooting for a lot of reasons. Reasons, one of which was a job that I got. And we are finally shooting next month in February. And I'm so excited, but also this month coming back, since coming back from the holiday has been just <laughs> pre-production all day, every day. And it's a lot. It's been very, very stressful. Uh, and I only tell you that to let you know that that's why I've been so quiet because literally every day is just getting up and thinking about headless and sending emails and putting out fires and planning things and there's so much to do with independent production and even though we have got such an amazing um, budget that you all helped us raise it goes so fast and the, we are still trying to find ways to make everything work but that's part of what producing independent film is and I have learned so much this time around just as I did with Poe Party just as I've done with everything else Shipwrecked has done. I do think we are going to make an incredibly fun, incredibly funny, incredibly shipwrecked show for you. I hope. I We are just hoping and praying that nothing goes wrong COVID-wise. We are going to do everything we can to keep everybody safe. We're shooting in an amazing location and we are shooting for three whole weeks so that's basically all i'm gonna be doing in february is just shooting headless you might be thinking when are we gonna get to see it that's a good question i mean there's a lot that's up in the air but we are hoping that we'll be able to release it um in the fall 
we'll see. And if you supported us on Kickstarter, be sure and keep track of your Kickstarter updates. We've been trying to be good about putting those out every so often. We will be doing Kickstarter perks in the next few months. So make sure all your info is up to date. And if for any reason you were not able to give during the Kickstarter and you'd still like to be a part of helping bring Headless to life, um, shoot me a message on Instagram or an email or whatever and we can discuss. One of the ways you can help support us with Headless is by buying a ticket to the local haunt. You might have seen Shipwrecked posting about this the last couple weeks. As a part of our Headless Kickstarter perks, we offered to certain levels a reading of one of Sean and Shalit. Shalades. We offered a reading of one of Sean and Sinead's unproduced pilots and we decided to do The Local Haunt, which is a pilot they wrote inspired by their time growing up in Salem, Massachusetts and working at Tacky Tourist Museums. And they also worked on this pilot during the 2018 Sundance New Voices Writers Lab. It's really special. We have an all-star cast reading it. We also had Dylan Glathorn write us a very cool little theme tune. Our friend Magical Narwhal did some awesome art. It's a really fun little production so I hope you'll check that out and um, be sure and do it before we take it down which is gonna be soon don't miss it a lot of you listened to and enjoyed my Anne of Avonlea podcast which I recently wrapped up putting out publicly in Mm, at the end of the year, December, maybe. Thank you so much for listening. I have so enjoyed working on these Anne chapters. And if you can't get enough, uh, you can get Anne of the Island, which is the third book in the series on my Patreon at the $30 level. Yes, that is kind of a lot, but you can get almost the entire book. And I do not know that it's something I'm gonna be putting out publicly for a while, just because I have a lot of other stuff going on right now and I just don't have time to focus on it. But uh, if you've enjoyed Anne of Green Gables and Anne of Avonlea as a free podcast, Podcast, consider joining my patreon for one month getting all of Anne of the Island and supporting me in many 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 hours of work that I put into that project. That said, there's a lot of other fun stuff happening on my Patreon if you'd like to join. I have a monthly other podcast called Dear Old World that's an interview podcast. For February, my guest is going to be Matt Inlow, the director of Squaresville. Uh, last month, my guest was Esther Fallick, dear friend from Spies Are Forever, and I've got like 20 other episodes of that podcast with all kinds of wonderful guests like all of these people. Not to mention, I've been re-releasing old uh, play readings and script readings that I've done on Patreon, and it's a wonderful community. So if you've wanted to join my Patreon or help support the work that I do or support me as I spend literally every waking minute making Headless happen, <laughs> head on over to my Patreon and join. It's a lot of fun stuff happening over there. That said, there's also Shipwreck's Patreon. We are doing a whole rehaul in February of some new perks and and actually, if you join uh, in the first two weeks of February, you will get our third anniversary gift, which is gonna be a little faux leather keychain featuring the Shipwrecked logo because the traditional third anniversary gift for um, anniversaries is leather. You can get that if you join in the first two weeks of February at the $15 level or more. And there's a lot of other fun perks happening on Shipwreck's Patreon. Not to mention, Shitty Broadway is back. Did some of you see our holiday special? It was so fun. I have so enjoyed uh, doing Shitty Broadway with my cohorts over there. If you don't know, Shitty Broadway is a group that we have where we do traditional musical theater songs, but always put uh, an unrehearsed or silly spin on them. And we just launched a Patreon, and last month we did Shitty Request Live, where we live streamed for an hour, and you guys gave us song requests, and we sang them, whether we knew them or not. It was so much fun, and we are gearing up to hopefully do another live show at some point this year. So lots of ways to support me and the various projects that I take part in and do on Patreon if you'd like to join. Beyond that, yes, I do have another piece of news that no, I still cannot tell you yet. <laughs> so just keep an eye on, you know, Instagram for whenever I'm allowed to tell you that piece of news. I thought I would have been able to by now, but I am just bursting at the seams. I got to shoot a really fun project last year and I am so excited to be able to share it with you soon. I can tell you that it is a character unlike any character I have ever played before and it's gonna be really, really silly and really fun. So just stay tuned for that. All right, I asked for some questions from you on social media, so let me answer a few of your questions. James asked, besides Headless, what are you most excited about in 2022? Um, I'm most excited about that 
magical job that I did that I can't tell you about yet. Wild Chevy asked, how many swords are in the collection now? In case you missed it, a good friend Steve sent me a surprise sword, Eowyn's sword from Lord of the Rings. Yes, and it's the best thing that's ever happened to me. Um, and now I only have one, but boy oh boy. Think of the swords I could add to the collection. Claire asked, assuming you work creatively full time, which I do now, thanks to a lot of you, what did you do as a day job before and when did you know you could transition to doing creative work full time? Um, I used to be pretty open about all this back in the Lizzie Bennett days. I only recently quit day jobs right before the pandemic actually, and it wasn't because of that, uh, but I just felt like I was getting too busy and I had enough Patreon income to support me. So I quit my last day job, which was working at a gluten-free donuts shop in like February of 2020, which of course uh, ended up being good timing. And I'm so thankful that Patreon supported me throughout the pandemic and has since. But no, I have had many, 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 many day jobs in my time as an actor. Speaking of time as an actor, can you believe that this year is the 10 year anniversary of the Lizzie Bennett Diaries? including babysitting, working at an ice cream shop, working at a donut shop. Um, I don't even know what else. I am very thankful for the day jobs that helped me get through because it is very, 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 very hard to make a living as an actor, even if you are at a certain success level. And I'm only able to continue to support myself now because of Patreon. So I am so, so thankful for all of you who make that possible for me. What's it like filming and auditioning during COVID? It sucks. Filming sucks. I actually feel like I prefer how auditions have changed, which is that now it's completely done through self tapes. I haven't had an in-person audition in two years and I've booked a lot more in the past two years than I had before then. So I don't know if that means that I'm bad at auditioning in person and I'm better at self-taping, I don't know. But I do know that I don't like having to drive all the way across town to go and say one or two lines and be in the room for five minutes and then drive back across town. I don't miss that. And um, I don't mind self-taping myself and editing and looking at my own auditions and making sure that I send in something that I'm really happy with. However, filming is a lot more complicated during COVID. And if you are an independent filmmaker like we are, it's a lot more costly. Um, because obviously it is very important to do everything you can to keep everybody safe. And that means testing and masks and you know, keeping everything clean and obviously those things cost money, but they are also just inconvenient and not fun. I, I had a thought the other day when I remembered that, you know, we're about to shoot Headless and our friend Chris is coming to take pictures like he always does when we do big projects and his pictures are so beautiful and you're not gonna be able to see anybody's faces. Everybody will have masks on. And don't take that as me being anti-mask. Of course, I'm like, we have to keep everybody safe. It just sucks. It's just such a bummer. I, I am looking forward to the time when we can be on set again and hopefully not have to do all of that. I hope that that is a time that's gonna happen again in our future. It also just slows everything down. And for a big, you know, a big production, like that has a lot of money, they have the money to spend to make sure that everything continues as it would, as much as it can, if things were normal. But when you don't have a lot of money, you are gonna lose a lot of time in trying to do all the things you have to do to make sure everybody stays safe. And it's also just scary because if one of the main actors gets COVID, there's nothing you can do. You just have to shut down for a few days. And that's something we're genuinely worried about uh, as we get ready to shoot Headless. So I am thankful that we are finding ways to make things work and to keep people generally safe and still make films and TV shows and, and whatever. And I'm thankful for the work that I've had during this time. I've had more work as an actor uh, during this time than ever before, but I am truly looking forward to the day when maybe we can be on set and not have to worry quite so much about all of that because it just it just makes it more difficult and less enjoyable for the general onset experience. Do you see a change in the types of roles and characters being sent to you to audition over the last few years? Uh, somewhat. The roles are getting older, generally. <laughs> 
I'm auditioning for fewer and fewer high school characters, but that's fine. That just is what happens. But in terms of like the type of role, not necessarily. I still get to audition for all kinds of things, comedies, dramas. I feel like generally I do get to audition for a lot of comedies, which I'm really thankful for because I really enjoy doing that. I am curious to see how and what sort of things I get asked to audition for in the coming years based on the work that I'm doing now. We shall see. All right, everybody, that's about everything I had to tell you about for now. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for your support in a weird and exciting time. And be sure and check out Anna Luisa to get yourself a Valentine's Day gift. Don't miss their buy one, get one 40% off sale that's ending on February 7th. And thank you so much, Anna Luisa, for your beautiful jewelry and for sponsoring this video. There's lots of links in the description to find all the different things that I talked about in this video. And as always, if you have any questions and wanna ask about anything, don't hesitate. Just drop me a comment or shoot me a message and I'll do my best to get back to you. However, maybe not until March. <laughs> Wish us a good shoot and we'll see you on the other side. Thanks, bye.